Chemistry lecture number 85, Calculation of Reaction Rate and the Rate Law. Reaction rate is the rate at which product is made in a chemical reaction. It can also be the rate at which reactant is consumed. If we know the change in the concentration of product and the time it takes for the amount to change, the average reaction rate can be calculated using a formula. Average reaction rate is equal to change in quantity over change in time. Uh, change in quantity is equal to the change in concentration of product or reactant. The units are expressed in moles per liter, which is represented by brackets. Uh, the change in quantity is expressed as a positive number. Change in time, uh, or the time needed for the amount of product or reactant to change. That's what the little delta T means. Uh, time is measured in seconds. So this reaction takes place in a container, and the chart below shows the concentrations of H2, Cl2, and HCl at t equals 0 seconds and t equals 4 seconds. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the average reaction rate expressed in moles of H2 consumed per liter per second, and we'll also calculate the average reaction rate expressed in moles of HCl produced per liter per second. So here's how we do it. Um, as this chemical reaction goes on, we're measuring the amount of H2, Cl2, and uh, HCl. So we're going to first figure out the rate at which H2 is consumed. Well, at the end of four seconds, there's 0.02 um, molar of H2, and at the start, there's 0.03. So the change in the amount of H2 is going to be uh, 0.02 minus 0.03, which is what we write right here. And then, the change in time on the bottom right here is going to be the final time minus the initial time, 4 minus 0. So that's what we write right here. So if we solve for this, 0 0.02 minus 0 0.03 divided by uh, 4, you get 0 0.025 moles uh, per liters per second. Now you might say that uh, 0 0.02 minus 0 0.03 should give us a negative number, but we want our answers to be positive, so we'll just take the absolute value. So. That's the answer to the uh, first part. That's the rate at which H2 disappears. Now let's figure out the rate, the average rate at which HCl appears. So at the start, there's no HCl, but then four seconds later, there's 0 0.02 molar of HCl. So it's going to be 0 0.02 minus 0. 0 0.02 minus 0. And then the change in time is 4 minus 0 again. So if you solve for this, fraction, you get 0 0.0050 moles per liter second for uh, HCl. So, what does it all mean? So it means that H2 disappears at an average rate of 0 0.025 moles per liter second, and HCl appears at a rate of 0 0.05 moles per liter second. A high concentration of reactants will make the reaction go faster. And as the reactants get used up, the reaction proceeds more slowly. Uh, the rate of a chemical reaction at a particular concentration of reactants can be calculated using the rate law for a reaction. So what is uh, the rate law? Well, suppose we have a chemical reaction where A plus B gives us C. Uh, the rate law for the reaction would be rate equals K times A to the X times B to the Y. So the rate is the instantaneous rate at which the concentration of the reactant disappears uh, or product appears at a particular concentration of reactants. So at a particular instant, this is the rate at which uh, product is made, roughly. K is something called the specific rate constant, and this is a number that relates reaction rate and concentration of reactants at a given temperature. Uh, a in brackets, that's the concentration of reactant A. And then X is the order of the reaction for reactant A. B in brackets is the concentration of reactant B. Y is the order of the reaction for reactant B. All right, so we're just giving labels right now. Now the values of X and Y are usually 0, 1, or 2. And sometimes the numbers are fractions or negative numbers. These numbers are referred to as orders. Uh, if x equals 1, then reactant A is first order. If y equals 2, then reactant B is second order. And the overall order for the rate law would be the sum of x and y, 1 plus 2 equals 3. So, uh, the rate law 
for this reaction is given to you right here. And the value of K for this is given right here. And what we want to do is we want to find the instantaneous rate of reaction uh, when the concentration of NO is 0 0.002 and the concentration of H2 is 0 0.004. So how fast is product being made the instant the reactants are at these concentrations? Right. Well, it's just a plug and crank uh, problem. So since the rate is given, we'll rewrite it right here, and we're trying to solve for the rate, so we're just gonna plug the numbers in. K is given as 2.9 times 10 to the two. Write that here. Concentration of NO is given as 0 0.02002. All right. Concentration of H2 is given as 0 0.004, which is what we have right here. So you just grind these numbers out and you'll get the rate. And if we do that, we get um, 4.64 times 10 to the negative 6 moles per uh, liters per second. So remember, that's the unit for uh, rate. So this is the reaction rate at the exact moment when the concentration of NO is 0 0.002 and the concentration of H2 is 0 0.004. Now a split second later, the reaction rate is gonna slow down since NO and H2 are consumed in the reaction, causing their concentration to decrease, all right? So this is the reaction rate at an exact instant, but then the moment a little of this and a little of that get used up, the reaction rate changes, it slows down. The rate law for a reaction is determined experimentally. Uh, reaction rates are measured at one concentration and then run again with the concentration of the reactants doubled. Now what I'm going to do next, I'm going to show you some concepts. They're not going to make a lot of sense until you see them applied, but try to keep them in the back of your head um, and you'll see how we apply them. So here's the uh, first concept. If doubling the concentration of a reactant has no effect on the rate, the order of the reactant is zero. So in a sense, doubling the concentration is equivalent to multiplying the rate by one. All right? And one is the same as two to the zero. So that's where the zero comes from. All right? So we've doubled the reaction rate, no change. When you multiply something by one, there's no change. And one is the same as two to the zero. So it's a zero order for the reactant. Here's another concept to keep in the back of your head. If doubling the concentration of a reactant doubles the rate, the order of the reaction is one. All right. So we've doubled the concentration of the reactant. Uh, the rate increases by two. All right. And two is the same as two to the one. So that's why it's a first order reaction. All right. There's one more concept to keep in the back of your mind, and then we'll apply them. If doubling the concentration of a reactant quadruples the rate, the order of the reactant is two. So by doubling the concentration, it's equivalent to multiplying the rate by four. All right? Four is the same as two squared, so that's why it's a second order for the reactant. All right. So we're gonna use this data table below, and we are going to try to find the rate law for this reaction. All right. So here's how we're going to do it. Um, we have several trials. So we have we mixed these two chemicals together at these concentrations, and that was the initial rate. And then we did another trial where we mixed the reactants at these concentrations, and that's the rate. And then we did a third trial where we mixed the reactants at these concentrations, and that was the rate. All right. And we're going to compare the rates. So first, let's compare trials one and two. Now between trials one and two, uh, the concentration of I2 is doubled from 0.05 to 0.1, while the concentration of CH3CO, CH3 is kept constant at 0.05 molar. All right? So this was kept constant, but the concentration of I2 was doubled from 0.05 to 0.1. And the reaction rate stays the same, 5.78 times 10 to the negative eight. There was no change in the reaction rate. So it was though, uh, the rate had been multiplied by one or two to the zero. So since doubling the concentration of I2 had no effect on the reaction rate, the order for I2 is zero. And we record the result as I2 uh, to the zero. All right, so doubling this 
no change. Same as multiplying it times 1 or 2 to the 0. So we record I2 to the 0. Now we're going to compare trials 2 and 3. Now between the trials, the concentration of CH3COCH3 is doubled from 0.05 to 1. All right. It's doubled the concentration of that. Uh, but the concentration of I2 is kept constant at 0.1, so that's kept constant. The reaction rate increased from 5.78 times 10 to the negative 8 to 1.16 times 10 to the negative 7th. All right. So if we were to divide this number by this number, we see that the reaction rate has doubled. All right. So 1.16 divided by 5.78 gives us 2, or 2 to the first. So since doubling the concentration doubled the reaction rate, the order of the reaction for this uh, reactant is 1. All right. So we're going to record this, or anything raised to the first power is equal to itself, so we can just record that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take I to the 0 and CH3COO raised to the implicit 1. right here. And so now we know what the rate law is. The rate is k times this to the first power times this to the zero power. And anything raised to the zero power is equivalent to one, so we can just basically cross it out. And we can just write rate equals that. So that's how we figure out the rate law for that particular reaction. Let's figure out the rate law for another uh, chemical reaction. So we're going to use this data table below to find the rate law and the specific rate constant for this reaction. All right, so it's the same process again. So we're going to compare trials 1 and 2. So from trial 1 to trial 2, the concentration of NO is doubled from 0.5 to 1. And when we double the concentration, the rate increases from 0.019 to 0 0.076. All right. It's four times faster because 0 0.076 divided by 0 0.19 gives us four. And four is the same as two squared. So the order of the reaction for NO is going to be two. All right. So we write NO2 squared. All right. Now we're going to compare trials two and three. From trials two and three, the concentration of Cl is doubled from 0.5 to 1, while well, this is kept constant. Um, and the rate is two times faster because 0 0.152 divided by 0 0.76 gives me 2. All right, 0.15 divided by 0 0.76 gives me 2, or 2 to the 1. So we take the 1 and we put that there. Okay. So the order of the reaction is just going to be um, 1 for Cl2. All right. So that's the order for that reactant. That's the order for that reactant. The rate law, then, is just going to be K times NO squared times CL. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solve for K. And the way we're going to do that is uh, the value of K can be found by substituting the concentrations and rate from any trial. So we're going to use the data from trial 1. So we're going to take this data, this row of data right here, and plug it into the formula and solve for K. So this top row right here is right there. All right. So taking this data and plugging it into the rate law that we just solved for, the rate is 0 0.019. K is what we're going to solve for. NO is 0.5 squared. CL is that. All right. Rearrange things to solve for K, 0 0.019 divided by these guys gives us that. And then K is going to be equal to 0 0.0152 liter squared mole squared uh, per second. All right. And the way you get these units right here is that you would have to actually substitute uh, moles uh, per liter into here and then uh, moles per liter second here and rearrange everything. But the important thing is just to get the number. That's the main thing that uh, I'm focused on right now. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture number 85, Calculation of Reaction Rate and the Rate Law.